各位观众，大家好，欢迎大家收看《英文作文二》的教学节目，我是林启明老师。今天呢，我们非常的高兴邀请到 Taylor 老师来到我们节目的现场。Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second part of our writing course. I'm Taylor. 今天呢，也很高兴的邀请到两位同学，一位是 Tiffany 同学。大家好，我是 Tiffany， 很高兴来到这个节目。我们也邀请到了 Laura 同学。Hi, I'm Laura. 很高兴来到这边。接下来呢，我们就要来做我们第一讲的讲说。那第一讲呢，我们要做的是 preparing to write， 就是准备写作。In this second part of the course, we will build upon the writing foundations you learned previously. 在本课程中呢，将运用到英文作文一所学习到的写作技巧作为基础。In this class, we will cover essay writing, short story writing. And other forms that may be useful for a future career, such as resumes and reviews. 本课程呢将包含完整的文章的写作、短篇故事的写作，以及将来呢你可能会运用到你的职场方面的有帮助的一说一些的写作形式，像是写履历表啦，或者写一篇评论。In the first few chapters, we will go over how to prepare to write, the general structure of essays. And guide you through the key aspects of writing an introduction, then body, and finally conclusion paragraphs. 本学期的前几周课程将会包含以下的章节。首先呢是预备写作，接下来呢会介绍一篇文章的结构。了解整篇文章大概的结构之后呢，会介绍如何写导言的段落、正文的段落以及结论的段落。We will then apply our essay writing skills to specific type of essays, which may be useful in your future job, problem solution essays. 接着呢，我们就会运用论文写作的技巧来写些在职场上可能会用到的论文，例如解决问题的论文。We will then change gears and delve into the world of storytelling. You will learn how to describe people and objects, tell your own story. Create your own fiction story, and even learn one of the most famous writing structures, the hero's journey. 接着呢，我们会学习另外一种作文的形式，那就是写故事。同学们呢，会学到如何的描述人物以及事物，可以说说自己的故事呢，也可以创造一个幻想的故事，也可以写英雄的一个故事。We will change course and look at writing strong resumes and cover letters to land you a job interview. 接着呢，我们就会教大家如何写一些强而有力的履历表，还有求职信。透过这样的履历表以及求职信，同学们呢就更能够成功的得到一个面谈的机会。The course will finish by applying the skills we learned from describing objects and writing different types of reviews, such as restaurants, movies, video games. Or any other product. 学期的最后呢，我们就会教大家如何写评论性质的文章，例如评论餐厅、电影、电动玩具以及其他的各种产品。Are you ready to begin? 大家准备好要学习了吗 ？Yes, let's do it. 好了，我们开始学习吧。In the first chapter, we're going to look at preparing to write. Before beginning a sport or exercising. Most people will do warm-ups, such as stretching, to get their minds and bodies ready for the tasks ahead. 第一章呢，我们是要复习之前我们学习到的预备写作。过了一个漫长的寒假，大家可能已经忘记了上学期我们教过的写作技巧。在这里呢，我们先简单的复习一下所谓的 preparing to write， 就是预备写作。就好像呢，我们在打球之前要做暖暖身运动一般，可以做一些伸展操啦，让我们的头脑还有身体准备好来接下来的运动。Writing is no different. Some simple planning and writing warm-ups can go a long way to make the writing process much easier and more productive. 写作呢也是一样的，一些简单的计划以及预备呢，可以让我们的写作的过程更为顺利。There are three major elements that every writer must keep in mind: subject, purpose, and audience. 写作的时候呢，我们该在心里牢牢地记住三个要素。主题、目的和读者。The subject is simply the topic that you're going to talk about in your paper. 
it's important to choose a topic that you understand very well or interests you. 首先呢，我们讲到的就是主题。主题呢，就是将来呢，我们在文章里面要说的东西。通常呢，我们最好选的一个主题呢，就是我们很了解这个东西，或者是它能够引起你的兴趣这样的主题。If a teacher assigns you a subject, say being a good student, try to find an angle or focus that interests you. 假如老师呢给你的作文题目是做个好学生。那么呢，你就要试着去想想看，怎么样能够更好的一个诠释的视角或者是重点。Once you have a topic, you will need to narrow it down. Topics such as TV shows, sports, or fashion are too broad. This isn't specific enough and leaves too much information to write about. 一旦呢，你找到了这个主题，接下来呢，就要试着把你的范围缩小。大家可以想一下，你觉得电视节目、运动还有时尚这样三个主题如何？他们是适当的呢，还是太广泛了？应该是适当的吧。其实呢，这三个题目呢都太过广泛了。我们用这三个题目呢，很难找到我们所要写的适当的资讯。我们最好呢把它们缩小范围。For example, TV shows. They've been around for quite a long time now. And there's many different genres, types, styles, and even the time period they were released. 举例而言呢，电视节目可以有各种不同的形式，各种不同的时间播放。Therefore, it is important that we narrow the topic to something more specific. Let's look at the example in the book. TV shows can be narrowed down to the genre. In this case, science fiction. This can be reduced even further. How about? The best science fiction TV shows. This can also be quite a big list. Let's take it another step further. The best science fiction TV shows released this year. 电视节目呢，这么大的范围的主题，我们可以把它缩小成为科幻电视节目，然后呢，再把它缩小成为最好的科幻电视节目，最后呢，再缩小为今年发布的最好的科幻电视节目。Once you have decided on a subject, it's important to think about the purpose of your writing. Do you want to entertain, inform, or persuade your readers? 一旦你决定好了主题，接下来要想的是，你的写作的目的是什么？写作的目的呢，是要去娱乐读者，要去告诉读者一些讯息，或者是要说服读者一些事情。If you want to entertain, you may tell a funny story. Or even use words and descriptions that will make someone laugh. 就娱乐读者的文章而言，假如呢你想要娱乐你的读者，你可能会说一些有趣的故事，或是使用一些字眼，让你的读者莞尔一笑。If you feel many people don't know or understand your topic very well, or have a misconception, they may choose to write to educate them on your topic. 第二个类型的文章呢，假如你觉得你的读者们不了解你的主题，或者是他们呢误会了你的主题，那么呢，你就可以写一些教育性的内容，来让你的读者更加了解这个主题。Sometimes we feel the need to convince people to share the same opinion. This is persuasion. You will use arguments to convince your reader to believe what you are saying, or even reject what someone else has to say. 接下来呢，要讲的是说服性的文章。有时候呢，我们为了要说服某人，让他们和我们有相同的意见，这就是说，你会选择你的论点来让你的读者相信你要说的话，或是拒绝别人的言论。Some pieces of writing may contain elements of both. For instance, using humor to entertain while trying to persuade your readers of your opinion. 有一些写作作品呢，可能包含了上面两种的面向。举例而言呢，你可能会用娱乐的方式来写一篇文章，但是你的目的呢，却是要说服你的读者，让读者呢产生和你有相同的意见。这样子呢，我们就包括了娱乐和说服这两种类型的写作方式。The last element is audience. Who will read what you have written greatly affects the style and word choices. Sending an email to a friend will be quite different than to a boss or a company representative in another country. 写作呢，它的最后一个要项呢，就是读者
，或者是我们所谓的观众，谁会读你的文章，对你的作品的形式、风格以及智慧的选择呢，有很大的影响。你要写一封 email 给你的朋友，所用的智慧呢，应该是和你要写给你的老板。或者是要给国外的一个公司的代表是有很大的不同的。Let's take a look at this sentence from the book. On weekends, I love going kayaking on Sun Moon Lake. For anyone that is Taiwanese or has lived here, this sentence is quite clear. 让我们来课看看课本上的一个例子。周末的时候呢，我喜欢去日月潭滑橡皮艇。你们认为这样的句子写得很清楚吗？很清楚。对某些台湾人或是住在台湾的人来说，这个句子很清楚；可是对外国人来说，可能不够清楚。If the reader doesn't know what Sun Moon Lake is, they may think it's a small lake near your house, perhaps a very quiet place to relax and spend time. 是的，没有错。假如这个读者呢，并不知道什么是日月潭，他可能以为日月潭呢，就是大家家旁边一个小小的湖，或者是一个很好的安静的休闲的地方。For this reason, we should add some additional information for our non-Taiwanese readers. I love going kayaking on Sun Moon Lake, which is Taiwan's largest lake and a major tourist attraction. So, we should add some information in this sentence to help the readers who are not from Taiwan know. For example, we can say, I like going to the lake to ski and ski. The lake is the largest lake in Taiwan and it is an important tourist attraction. But what if we don't know if the reader knows about Taiwan or not? 那万一我们不知道读者是不是了解台湾呢 ？Good question. In that case, it's best to play it safe、uh, and include the extra information. Most readers won't mind a few extra sentences about a topic they're familiar with. However, a reader unfamiliar with your topic may get the wrong impression or even feel confused, which we don't want. 这是个好问题。在这种情况之下呢，我们能够把多余的讯息放进去呢，是比较保险的。大部分的读者并不会介意说，在这个主题上面有比较多的讯息。然而，如果我们不加上这些讯息呢，对于那些不懂这个主题的人，可能会有错误的资讯，或是非常的混淆。Now that we have our subject, purpose, and audience determined, we can move on to the pre-writing stage. 现在呢，我们已经有我们的主题。我们的目的，还有我们的观众，接下来呢，就是要到了预备写作的阶段了。同学们，你们在看到写作题目的时候，是不是拿起笔来就开始写呢？我通常会先想一下。Pre-writing techniques can be used to help determine a topic, narrow it down, or even come up with supporting ideas. 预备写作的技巧呢，可以让我们决定主题。缩小范围，甚至呢会产生支持主题的想法。Many students tend to skip this step and just begin writing. While this can be understandable, it can make the writing process more difficult. 很多学生呢喜欢跳过这个步骤，然后呢就直接开始写作，但是这样做呢可能会使我们的写作的过程呢更加的困难。In this course, we are going to look at two popular pre-writing techniques. There are others out there, so we encourage you to explore those not mentioned in this class and see which you prefer the most. 在这一个课程里面呢，我们要介绍两种预备写作的技巧。当然呢、啊，也有其他的方式可以帮助你做预备写作。你也可以试着去尝试各种的方式，看看哪一种方式更适合你。First, we're going to look at brainstorming lists. This involves writing lists of words that are associated with the general topic. You can start by setting a timer for 10 minutes or even longer if needed. 首先呢，我们将要使用的呢叫做脑力激荡列表。你可以先将计时器呢记在十分钟或者是更长的时间来写这个表。Begin writing a list of things that come to mind. The items must not be related to each other, except in that they fall under the general category, such as TV shows or fashion. 比如现在呢，我们要写的呢是一个电视节目或是时尚的文章。只要我们呢脑力激荡想出来的字是在电视时尚这样的范畴底下就可以了，并不需要这些字眼呢彼此是有关系的。Let's take a look at the next example in the book. 
The student has been given the topic travel. They wrote down everything they came to mind, like shopping, food, foreign countries, Hong Kong, Singapore, sleeping on couches, and so on. 让我们来看一下这个例子。在这里呢，同学们呢要写的主题呢叫做旅游。我们写下来的脑力激荡列表有：购物、美食、海外国家、香港、新加坡，或睡在沙发椅上等等。Once the time is up, you can look at the list to see if there are any items that are more closely related to each other. 一旦时间到了呢，比如说十分钟到了，你就看看你的表上面那些哪一些呢彼此的关系呢是比较密切的，你就把它标注出来。The student was reminded of a trip to Hong Kong, so they highlighted all words relating to that experience, like food, foreign countries, Hong Kong, and weather, meet new people, budget. Airlines, getting sick, meeting old friends, and bad experiences. 我想到的是到香港的旅游，所以我就把相关的词汇，例如美食、海外的国家、香港、坏的天气、遇到新朋友、廉价航空、生病、遇到老朋友、有坏的经验这些字，全部标出来。With a more specific topic, you can do another brainstorming list to generate more specific ideas. 如果主题更加特殊的话呢，所想出来的智慧呢就会更加的详细。In this case, the writer remembers that the Hong Kong trip was more terrible than good. They flew with a terrible budget airline, ended up getting food poisoning, and stayed inside the whole trip due to the sickness and bad weather. 在这个例子里面呢，记者呢，他记得香港的旅途是一个很糟糕的经验。他不仅呢搭了很糟糕的廉价航空，最后呢，甚至呢还食物中毒，以及天气很不好啦。大部分的时间他都待在室内。For this reason, the student crossed out all the words that do not support the idea that this was a terrible trip. 因此呢，同学呢，他就把他删掉那些跟这个糟糕的旅程没有关系的那些智慧。So it's best to do the brainstorming list only two times. Is that correct? So, is it best to do the brainstorming list only two times? Is that correct? So, there's no limit to the amount of times you can do the list. If after brainstorming you feel you could narrow your ideas even more, by all means, do the list a third or even fourth time. 没有规定说脑力激荡列表应该要做几次。假如多做几次呢？脑力激荡列表你觉得可以更加缩小你的范围的话，那你做三次、四次也可以。Pre-writing can be quite an individual thing. Feel free to adapt or expand the pre-writing techniques to what suits you best. 写作预备呢，它是一个非常个人化的事情。你可以选择各种适合自己的技巧。Now let's look at our second pre-writing technique and my personal favorite, free writing. 接下来呢，我们来看看第二种预备写作的技巧，也是 Taylor 老师他个人最喜欢的技巧，就是自由写作。This method involves writing freely without worrying about grammar, spelling, punctuation, or writing mechanics. You are free to write whatever comes to mind. 自由写作呢，就是要自由的写作，而不需要去担心文法啦。拼字啦，标点符号啦，甚至是各种的写作机制，你可以写任何你脑子里出现的话。To start with, set a timer for 10, 20, or even 30 minutes. You can start by writing words, phrases, expressions, or any random ideas. Be sure to work quickly. 开始的时候呢，你就先设定一个十分钟、二十分钟或者三十分钟的定时期，然后呢，你就开始写任何你想到的句子。你必须要确保你写的速度是非常的快的。The point is to get ideas flowing freely and onto the paper. If you make a mistake, just keep writing. Correcting any mistakes takes too much time and will disrupt the idea generating process. 这个实施的重点呢、啊，是把你想要的东西、想到的东西，立刻的写出来，快速的写出来，写在纸上。就算写错，也不要停下来，继续一直写。订正这些错误会浪费你的时间，而且呢，会影响到你的思想的流畅度。If you're not sure where to start, simply start by writing, "I don't know what to write about." Or if you get stuck, write, "I have no idea what else to write here." 假如呢，你不知道想要如何开始的时候呢，你可以写这样的句子：我不知道要写什么。或者是呢，假如你在写到一半的时候，你的思绪卡住了，那你可以说 
不知道有什么可以写的。Once you get these no ideas out of your head and on paper, you may find it easier for new ideas to come to mind. 我们一旦呢把这些想不到主意的这些字句写下来之后，新的想法可能就会产生了。We can see from the example in the book how the student had no idea what to write, and slowly came up with the idea to write about Hong Kong. 以下的句子呢就可以看出来，学生刚开始的时候呢虽然不知道写什么，渐渐呢他就想出来写关于香港的旅途的事情。As we look through the free writing example, you will see that there are plenty of mistakes, and the author did not stop to correct them. They just continued on going. 像以下的这个例子呢，作者呢，他就一直写，一直写。虽然呢有文法的错误，但是他还是继续的写。My topic is travel, but I have no idea what to write about. I mean, I like to travel, but I don't get to do it very often. I did go to Singapore once. That was a lot of fun. I met up with my brother for the weekend. It was great to see him and hang out, but man, Singapore was expensive. We went to the top of that famous hotel with the infinity pool. I had a frozen margarita for twenty-four dollars. That was insanely expensive, but it was the best margarita I've had in my life. I'm not sure what else I can write here. I mean. Talking about vacations seems kind of boring. Who wants to hear about my vacation? Most of the time, they're not even that good. Like the time before that, I went to Hong Kong with my girlfriend. Boy, was that a disaster! Four days of rain and food poisoning. I mean, it wasn't all bad, I guess. I got to see Brooke, one of my oldest friends, who had been living there. She introduced us to some friends who were really nice and some great beers. But we couldn't walk to any of the beaches nearby because it kept on raining. Then, after the first day, my girlfriend and I got food poisoning. I'm not sure if it was the American tacos we had for lunch or the dim sum that night, but the next morning we were both vomiting and feeling terrible. I wasn't as bad as my girlfriend; she was much, much worse. So I had to take her to the doctor. In the end, she slept for 21 hours. I stayed in bed most of the day, sleeping half of the time. 刚才那个例子里面 ，Taylor 老师有说到到香港去的例子，在这个例子里面呢，讲到很多不好的经验。可是这些不好的经验呢，并不是他想好了要写什么，而是他一边想一边想到说，哎，也许我接下来不知道写什么，可是他的字还是继续不断的写下去，作文还是继续的写。这个就是 free writing。A benefit of free writing is that some of your sentences may be suitable for your piece of writing. You can simply cut and paste any sentences you deem good enough, and thereby set saving time. 自由写作的好处呢，就是我们在写作的时候，可能有一些好的句子，那在正式写作的时候，只要把它剪下来贴上去就可以，节省了不少时间。We can see from this student's example writing, they also didn't know where to start, so they started by writing. I have no idea what to write about. This got their idea out of their head, and they managed to actually start writing about some ideas. 同学呢，他在写这篇文章的时候，他是做 free writing， 所以他刚开始呢也不知道自己要写什么，所以他就写说，哎，我不知道我要写什么。We also saw later that at some point they got stuck and they didn't know what to write about. So he wrote, I don't know what to write about here. 然后写着写着呢，他就突然卡住了。他不知道讲什么，他就说：“哦、oh, ，我不知道接下来我该写什么。” We can see that the student had a stream of consciousness writing, which is just writing the words that comes out of your mind. 所以这个同学呢，他就把他脑袋里面想到的东西就一直写，一直写下来。Although the student had many different ideas and wasn't sure what to write about, by the very end, they came across an idea that they thought they could do. 虽然这个同学呢，他就一直不知道自己该写什么，但是到最后呢，他也终于想到该写什么了。The student then went back and underlined many of the sentences that fit the idea that they came up with. In this case, the trip to Hong Kong. 然后呢，他就回去啦，把他觉得呢相关的画了重点，在下面画了横线。这些呢，就是在这个文章里面跟香港有关的经验。
A benefit of free writing and underlining your sentences is that some of your sentences may be suitable for your piece of writing. You can simply cut and paste any sentences you deem good enough, and thereby saving time. 自由写作的好处呢，就是我们在写作的时候呢，可能有一些好的句子，然后呢，也许呢，你就可以把它划重点，然后正式写作的时候呢，你就把它剪下来贴上去，这样可以节省不少时间。Before you move on to your exercises, let's review what we have learned so far. 在我们开始做练习之前呢，我们先复习一下我们今天学的东西。We talked about determining our topic and how to narrow them down. If our topic is too broad, it can be too difficult to write about, or require a lot more writing. We determined whether our intent was to entertain, inform, persuade, or even a mixture of the two. Then we decided to entertain the readers. 还是要通知读者，还是要说服读者的这样的模式，或者是两者的混合。The last of the three writing elements was the audience. Knowing who will read our words has a huge impact on how and what we write. 最后呢，我们讲到呢是观众，知道我们的读者是谁呢，对我们将来要做的写作呢，以及要写些什么是有很大的影响的。And we saw two different pre-writing techniques: brainstorming lists and free writing, and how they can be used to generate ideas. 最后讲到呢，两个预备写作的技巧，来产生你的想法，就是脑力激荡列表以及自由写作。现在同学们呢，我要来考你们一下，你们还记得我们写的三个要素？写作三要素是什么呢？写作三要素就是先决定主题，然后看看我们的目的，最后再了解我们的读者是谁。非常好，那大家知不知道我们有什么方法可以来做预备写作呢？有脑力激荡列表法，还有自由写作方法。Now let's practice narrowing down a topic by ourselves. Laura, your topic is makeup. Makeup? Um, I can think of lips, lipsticks, and. For lipsticks, I can also talk about colors. Okay. And maybe shiny and not shiny colors. Very good. Great example of being more specific. Just make sure that your topic isn't too specific, that you can actually write a whole essay about it. Okay. And Tiffany, your topic is fashion. Fashion. I can think of clothing and maybe specifically、uh, winter clothing. And I would like to write about winter clothing for skiing. That's a great example. Now we have a great topic of fashion all the way down to winter skiing. Not too broad and also not too narrow. 刚才呢，同学们呢看到呢，就是我们的 Taylor 老师和两位示范的同学跟大家讲，怎么样把一个主题呢 narrow down， 把它缩得更小一点，范围更小一点。Turn now to the end of the chapter for the writing exercises. Afterwards, we will see in the next chapter where we will make the jump from writing paragraphs to entire essays. 那下一章呢，我们就是要从段落的写作跳到文章的写作了。那今天呢，很高兴呢，大家来收看我们的这个节目。那这一讲就到这里结束，谢谢大家。